Hello and welcome to this special edition of Straight Talk. I'm Aisha Subarkash. Almost two decades after being toppled in a US-led invasion of Afghanistan, the Taliban had staged a dramatic comeback and taken control of the country, facing little resistance from the Afghan government forces. Within hours of the Taliban taking control of the capital, Kabul, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani fled the country, saying he decided to leave to prevent bloodshed. The Taliban has declared that the war in Afghanistan is now over and called for peaceful international relations. Many analysts blame U.S. President Joe Biden's decision to swiftly withdraw troops from the country for the chaos in Afghanistan. The developments in Afghanistan will surely have a major impact on its neighbors as well as across the world. But one country that perhaps will have a major role to play is Pakistan. I sat down with the president of Pakistan, Arif Alvi, to discuss the impact of the developments in neighboring Afghanistan on his country and what role can Pakistan play in bringing stability to the war-torn country. Mr. President, welcome to Istanbul and welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you on the program. We know that you're here for the handing over ceremony of the Corvette Turkey built for Pakistan. We're going to talk about the bilateral relations, of course, but there is this most pressing issue at the moment, which is Afghanistan. Taliban has taken control of the country without facing up any resistance. What's your take on that? I think uh, Pakistan has been looking forward towards peace in Afghanistan. Whatever happens, however the Afghan people resolve these issues, it is up to them. Pakistan wants to be able to take part in the reconstruction of Afghanistan, in, inshallah, with peace coming around. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, what has happened, is the Western governments and NATO and their allies were not really aware of what was happening and how soon uh, um, the uh, Ashraf Ghani government will, uh, will move away or leave the uh, leave its position and uh, so but most so of it Ashraf there Ghani's are no reports i've heard has, he has, has not surprised you at all uh, the timing has been surprising for everybody in the world yes not only pakistan but okay. the us all those analysts who were there who were estimating yes. this in 6 months and 9 months i had estimated personally uh, about 3 months mm -hmm. but that too um, it happened much faster than that yeah. And I think uh, the thing to take away from that is there are no big reports of violence. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most important factor, which I, I believe I'm an optimist. I'm looking forward to a peaceful Afghanistan mm -hmm. and uh, a big role. Uh, what has happened in Afghanistan is that Pakistan, other than the Afghan people themselves in the last 20, 30, 40 years, Pakistan has been the biggest loser after Afghanistan itself, people yes. of Afghanistan. And as peace returns, after the people of Afghanistan, Pakistan will be the biggest winner in that peace. So we are, we are quite hopeful that things will settle down quite fast. If you yes, just mentioned Pakistan itself has been a victim of terrorism in, in fighting the Pakistani Taliban. So are you worried now that the Taliban is in full control? You've mentioned that peace will come to Afghanistan, but if it doesn't, uh, have you taken any measures? And do you believe that a Taliban take over will somehow um, encourage other terror groups to resurface in I that region? I think there's a principal stand which gives me hope. Number one, Pakistan has fenced its border, a very long border, but Pakistan has fenced its border. That helps. That helps because the population which has been living between Afghanistan and Pakistan on the borders, um, our families traditionally they've moved without borders, without uh, without any fencing, but today Pakistan has fenced the entire border to prevent uh, any situation from deteriorating because of terrorism, number one. Number two, uh, the Taliban have given assurance to the U.S. that their country will not be used uh, in terrorist activities against the United States. They have given the same assurance to China mm -hmm. that their country will not be used for any uh, terrorist activities uh, anywhere uh, in China. Similarly, on the same principle, I am very hopeful that the same attitude will be there as far as uh, uh, Afghanistan's new government, what, what, whatever form it takes, with, with Pakistan. Do you find Taliban trustworthy? I think so, because uh, uh, whoever is in Afghanistan, we will trust them as, a, as our neighbor, as our partner mm -hmm. uh, in the neighborhood and for peace.
So uh, has your country been in contact with the U.S. during the withdrawal or you were notified at all? No, we were in contact. The, 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 the information was coming through. We thought it was a hasty withdrawal. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we have tried to guide the United States all through these last 20 years. In fact, the day uh, NATO bombed Kabul, myself and Mr. Imran Khan, the Prime Minister, we, were, we held a press conference in Islamabad. Mm -hmm. And we thought that war is never a solution. I repeat, throughout the world, world war is never a solution. And, and, uh, uh, and we thought that talks and accommodation with the people was, was far better. So uh, a lesson has been learned, hopefully, by the world. But humanity forgets these lessons quite quickly. Yes, the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, the world learned a lesson, and the next generation forgot it. What happened in Vietnam? The world learned a lesson, and the next generation promptly, within 20 years, within 20 years, forgot that. Yes. So I think it may be in human nature to love and hate. Okay, so what do you make of your Prime Minister Imran Khan's earlier statement that the U.S. finds Pakistan useful uh, only to clean up mess in Afghanistan? What's your take on that? I think that's what happened when the Soviets withdrew. I think there was good U U.S. and Pakistan cooperation. In fact, uh, there was encouragement of resistance in Afghanistan against the U.S. with good collaboration between Pakistan and United States. But as soon as the Soviets left, it mm -hmm. was Pakistan which was holding everything, trying to change the situation, and Pakistan was having, uh, in fact, rather than helping Pakistan, Pakistan was a sanctioned country in a number of ways. So similarly, today we feel that uh, uh, Pakistan, a lot of mess is there on our borders, and Pakistan uh, will be able to manage that. I assure the world that Pakistan will be able to manage that, and uh, I am I, very optimistic that there will be a good government in uh, Afghanistan, peaceful government. So moving on from uh, the Prime Minister's statements, what does that mean for the two country relations, I mean the U.S. and Pakistan moving forward? I think U.S. and Pakistan, we've, have, we've had a very strong relation since the time of independence of Pakistan. In fact, we are partners with, we were partners with them in C2 and CENTO in the 50s and 60s. Um, there has been good collaboration when uh, the uh, Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan. There has been good collaboration in anti-terror activities with Pakistan. Um, I think uh, uh, the relationship has been strong. And if there are some dips now and then because of a crisis, uh, uh, it, had, it had become a fashion to blame Pakistan for what is happening in Afghanistan. Yes. But the swift collapse in Afghanistan tells us and the world that is far beyond what control countries can play. The Afghan people probably welcome Taliban coming in. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, that should take away the blame game which was going on that Pakistan is responsible. I think with 20 years of presence of the United States spending, according to their own estimates and some estimates about almost two trillion dollars uh, yes. investing uh, hundreds of billions in the development of Afghanistan, I think uh, uh, the g blame game, uh, finding a scapegoat mm -hmm. uh, is easy. It's, we, uh, countries have to look inside uh, with reference to the role they played. Mm. So after this stage, will Pakistan invest in Afghanistan? Of course. We see, because we are a neighboring country, we hosted four million refugees. Yes. These numbers should be surprising to the world at large because oh. uh, the Western countries refused to allow such big numbers to come in. Pakistan hosted four million refugees. It was a serious matter, great matter of goodwill between us and the people of, of Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. uh, this diaspora of Afghanistan in Pakistan is like any diaspora in the world. They have learned the skills of a better, so of a more economically better society, and uh, they will go back. They will take part in reconstruction of Afghanistan. At the same time, Pakistan's efforts to help the government in Afghanistan to rebuild Afghanistan mm -hmm. will always be on the table and we are looking forward to that. You are quite optimistic about the Taliban, so um, is Pakistan likely to recognize Taliban as the legitimate representative of the Afghan people? I am I'm, I'm not, I, uh, Pakistan is deliberating on that mm -hmm. and I think uh, uh, whatever decisions the government will make will happen with a consultation with a number of countries. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, first, we have to evaluate the situation as it emerges. Mm -hmm. Do you have any preconditions? 
I think uh, uh, we will always like assurances, the, the ones which were given to China and the United States that the Awan territory, so do we think that our territory will never be used against any other country. Uh, these, these are international norms, norms mm -hmm. settled in the Charter of the United Nations. There's, what is in the Charter of the United Nations, those kind of assurances are always there, should be there. Mm -hmm. Are you in touch with the Russians as well? Of course, there has been good consultation between us. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have been in consultation on a number of issues in the region, spe specifically China, Ch Iran is our friend, mm -hmm. Turkey itself is a very deep friend of ours, Russia and all the neighboring countries, mm -hmm. who, the stakeholders in the region, except for the fact that, let me make very, be very clear, we find uh, India has used Awan territory uh, to uh, create terror in Pakistan. Yadav, the, the, uh, the, the person who was captured, even um, recently the bombing in Lahore uh, timed with the FATF meeting, I think India has played as a spoiler and uh, through our international dialogue, for example, with you, we urge India to go to not to use any territory against Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So, and we expect that will not happen from Afghanistan now. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has said even himself uh, may one day talk to the Taliban leadership. What do you make of that statement and do Turkey and Pakistan share similar views in tackling with the group? I think Turkey and Pakistan share similar views on a number of uh, issues. Uh, Pakistan is going, moving away from a geocentric approach to a geoeconomic approach. Pakistan is in the center of uh, opportunities of Central Asia mm -hmm. and of our region to establish communication lines in gas, in transport, in rail link. The CPEC corridor itself is a link uh, to allow Chinese uh, goods to go to the oceans and for uh, import of uh, goods towards China and development within Pakistan. So Turkey and Pakistan and all other countries we have been uh, discussing Afghanistan, of course, is a very serious issue. Mm -hmm. So you've met uh, the uh, President Erdogan, uh, I think, yesterday, and you've probably talked about the situation in Afghanistan. Are you on the same board? We are ab absolutely on the same board. What are the challenges, in your opinion, uh, for a uh, peaceful transition of power? Actually, Taliban has resumed power again, but how do you see peace being reinstalled in the country, and what could Turkey and Pakistan do together? I think uh, it is important to see that uh, uh, there, there is a not, not a lot of violence and provincial capitals within Afghanistan uh, uh, yielded to the t Taliban very easily. And I believe whatever I have read up to now, uh, these are just press reports, whatever I have read up to now, um, uh, Taliban themselves are encouraging the fact that they will they probably uh, declare amnesty and uh, with, in a matter of forgiveness and friendliness they want to uh, come into power in Afghanistan. Okay, Taliban said they are they have declared amnesty, but are you even concerned about the women's situation in the country? I think it is up to the people of Afghanistan to handle that. Uh, I don't think the situation of women can be determined uh, from any other lens other than the, own, their own people. Uh, and I'm confident that Taliban uh, will be able, they've made certain statements already. Uh, they have made statements that even in Doha they made statements mm -hmm. and I believe if, when, if and when the Taliban come into power they will, uh, uh, they will ensure the fact that uh, whatever statements they have been making as far as women are concerned or as far as peace is concerned, uh, I am sure they will carry it out. There it, is, it seems to be a principled movement as far as uh, establishing a society. Um, and they, they say they want to establish an Islamic Sharia, I think they will, they will manage that well. What if Taliban uh, fails to keep its promises? I, I think it is a difficult time. I think uh, the promises made, made by the superpowers to the other countries in the world mm -hmm. have failed. I feel that Pakistan has an issue of Kashmir. The yes. promises made by the United Nations, the resolutions they have made yes. to the United Nations. I think uh, we would like to question what the world situation is. Why does uh, vested interest take over when promises have been made? Mm -hmm. So it's a huge issue as far as promises are concerned. Mm -hmm. We don't want to force the Taliban only on this mat. On this mat, there are a lot of countries which will, will be, uh, should be questioned. Okay. We're going to touch on the Kashmir issue, but uh, the uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan also said that Pakistan was under pressure from the Western countries 
including the U.S., because of its close ties with China. Does that mean that Pakistan is uh, sort of in a situation that it has to choose either side? Pakistan is trying to convince the world. Pakistan is trying to convince the West that it's not an either-or situation. It's an accommodative situation. Pakistan has always believed that, that we have long-standing economic and yes. cooperative ties with China, mm -hmm. and we have long-standing economic and cooperative ties, ties with the U.S. And please don't remember historically, sometimes people don't give importance to history. Pakistan was the first link, the first country which established a link between China and the United Nations and China and the world. The first airline of China uh, started communicating first with Pakistan. So China was, uh, Pakistan opened the doors of China and to the U.S both mutually. So the Pakistan has played a tremendous role. Today, again, when we bring people together, how are we expected to say that it is an either or? It's not an either or for Pakistan. Mm. So how do you think the um, Taliban's takeover would impact China's Belt and Road Initiative, which includes billion dollar projects, including countries like Pakistan uh, and Turkey? So will it be impacted negatively? No, I don't think so. I believe that there are a number of communication links uh, which are uh, CASA 1000, TAPI, uh, uh, the, oil, uh, the pipeline uh, communication uh, all through Central Asia, through Afghanistan, through Herat, through to Gwadar is something which the governments have been looking forward to. In fact, recently uh, the president of Tajikistan was in Pakistan and he was telling me it is far shorter for him to fly from Pakistan to uh, uh, Tajikistan than from, for me to from Islamabad to Karachi. So, uh, because of Afghanistan and not, uh, peace having not been there in Afghanistan, the communication links for them to export goods to the to the Caspian Sea or to the yes. to the Black Sea is a very long route. So Pakistan f offers a sh the shortest route to the Central Asian countries and China through Pakistan. So it, it is Afghanistan desperate situation of these countries of all the neighbors that Afghanistan should come to peace. Okay, coming to strong relations between Turkey and Pakistan, we've seen increased defense cooperation between the two countries. How is that going? Um, I think that is very good. I think that uh, Pakistan and Turkey have had a relationship, like I mentioned yesterday in my speech, have a relation which is, more, which is centuries old. Pakistan came into being in 47, and the modern Republic of Turkey came into being a little before, but there is a heart-to-heart -heart relationship which has always been there. Pakistani, uh, Pakistani people came to Turkey to defend Turkey. Pakistan supported Turkey in the Khilafah mov movement. Uh, historically very close ties. Uh, we uh, donated whatever we had in the 1880s because of Turkish earthquake. So, it is such a strong relationship and it is evidence between the people. Actually, the world does not even understand what friends are. Today, it is just only vested interest, it is only short term interest by people come together. Pakistan and Turkey is one great example uh, to the world that mm -hmm. what friends look like <laughs> and, and their understanding. All issues are the same. We support Turkey as far as uh, Northern Cyprus is concerned. Pakis uh, Turkey supports Pakistan as far as Kashmir cause is concerned because these are both principled stances. Okay. But when will Pakistan recognize the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus then? That is a matter of discussion between Pakistan and Turkey, and I think uh, 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 the peaceful relationships ensures the fact that we, will, we, we have a good understanding. So, uh, why do you think this uh, close defense cooperation between Turkey and Pakistan is disturbing India? Actually, there is a, there is a situation which is happening in that region which is called Quad. Uh, which is uh, there are there are situations there is a situation in the world where there are misunderstandings between China as a rising power mm -hmm. and the U.S. as a defending power in the sense of trade and uh, opportunities and uh, uh, therefore the world is in a flux. Uh, Pakistan is has been neutral to all its all situations, but Pakistan at the same time understands how the interests of the people of Pakistan should be kept protected and in a principled manner. So, in that flux, uh, uh, I think uh, the cooperation between, between Pakistan and Turkey, where the world 
uh, it creates barriers on inflow of knowledge and technology. Mm -hmm. the, 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 it is important that Pakistan and Turkey cooperate uh, in, in defense areas also. Yeah, Mr. President, we just said there in deep cooperation, the two countries, Absolutely. especially on the defense sector. But um, are there any steps being taken to increase bilateral trade? I think my discussions with President Erdogan yesterday, and there were very long discussions, I think um, uh, there's a, there are joint committees which had been uh, formed in the Ministry of Commerce in Pakistan and the similar ministry in Turkey. And the specific 71 action points have been decided. So uh, as, as the uh, leadership between the two countries meets, it is important that all these 71 points are then looked at. And I believe there is a tremendous opportunity of trade. There are good investments in, of uh, Turkey in Pakistan. And uh, I think there are opportunities in halal meat, and you name it, in agriculture products, in uh, Turkish cooperation, in minerals in Pakistan. Pakistan has a huge source of mineral yes. supplies, and Turkish expertise would be important there. So uh, I think there has been Turkish investment in Pakistan, which has started exporting goods to Africa. So it's it's a it's a matter of hope and strength, improving strength between us. Are you satisfied with the current trade volume between the two countries, given the huge potentials? Uh, no, the I'm not satisfied. Nations? I think, given the huge potential, I think we have to. What work are very the challenges? Hard. Why it's not translated into life? I think uh, uh, practically there is a lot of work which needs to be done. In fact, uh, we have been looking for what we have with other countries, which is a free trade agreement. I think there are more negotiations need to be done, mm -hmm. and uh, the progress is being made. So we know the situation between India and Pakistan, that both nations celebrated their 74th anniversary of independence over the weekend, but despite the passage of seven decades, the Kashmir issue is still there. Uh, is there a way forward in this matter? I hope so. I, we wish that. The way we are wishing for peace in Afghanistan, as soon as this government came, Mr. Imran Khan uh, asked Mr. Modi that if you take one step forward, we will take two steps forward. But what is happening in India is something very different. Uh, India is fighting a battle with itself and its own history. And that re results in laws being made which are against minorities and especially Muslims. These are a matter of great concern for us. Imagine a law being made that uh, uh, those citizens, those people who do not have a card or some identity, India is going making identity cards for people. If uh, you need to bring property documents of your grandfather. So if you bring property documents of your grandfather, you become a citizen. If you are a Hindu, in, imagine that. This, this, in this world today, in this time, if you are a Hindu, if you don't have property documents, we will give you citizenship. If you are a Muslim, we will not give you citizenship. So this is this is kind of action which leads to you isolate people, you term it genocide. In fact, the recent statement of Mr. Modi on 14th August that it is a uh, it is it is a day in which we recall whatever bloodshed happened in, at the time of partition. Uh, he is sowing seeds of discord within India. Mm -hmm. Pakistan is worried as a neighbor. Any discord on its neighborhood in its neighborhood, like in Afghanistan creates problems for Pakistan. We want peace. So similarly, what they're trying to change the demography of Kashmir. Mm -hmm. So it's a very painful situation. The, there are killings, there are rape is used as a tool, and we are continuously informing the world. And that is why where Turkey plays a very important part on the principle stand with us. With Turkey recognizes what is happening. Turkey informs the world. We inform the world. It's the time of the media today. We must inform the world. We show images. India yes. doesn't allow journalists to go into Kashmir. Yes. We know Turkey's support, but why has Pakistan unable to get enough support besides Turkey from other countries? Why do you think, let's say, Gulf countries are not vocal about what has happened there and still is happening? I think we keep on, we, we, uh, it is important that this government and previous government, the issue has been on the table despite what India says. And as soon as India resumed the presidentship, uh, uh, started the presidentship of the Security Conference, it made a statement that Kashmir is an integral part of India, which was then contradicted by the 
uh, by the United Nations that is not so. It is a burning issue. It is still there on the table. Uh, we, we, uh, we need to show the world, continuously to show the world what is happening inside Kashmir to move, convince world opinion that action has to be taken. Otherwise, it is a festering situation. The poverty in India is far greater than in, than in Pakistan, still despite econ economic progress. This is what a Pakistan government, Mr. Imran Khan gov government made a statement that poverty is there, poverty is here, let us come towards peace. It is investing in its defense enormous amounts of money. So, mm -hmm. therefore, Pakistan as a country which is progressing also has to invent it, uh, invest it in its own defense. So, this is a no-win situation and I hope India realizes this soon enough. All right, Mr. President, unfortunately, we will have to wrap it up here. Thank you very much for Thank joining you. us on Straight Talk. Thank, you very, it a lot. Thank you very much.